President Zelensky, Ukraine wants to cancel Crimea request. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that Kiev's goal to destroy Russia's Crimea bridge is part of the plan for a new counterattack. We really want to destroy Russia's infrastructure, he said on April 8th. It's not just the Kirk Bridge that people are talking about. We're talking about some structural infrastructure into military targets. We are talking about bridges and airports. The Ukrainian leader made a similar statement last year when Kiev launched a counteroffensive campaign to reclaim territories controlled by Russia. In an online speech at the Aspen Security Forum last July, Mr. Zelensky declared that the Crimea Bridge was a legitimate target for Ukraine and must be neutralized. Since the outbreak of the Ukrainian conflict in 2022, many officials and commanders in Ukraine have threatened to destroy the 19 kilometers bridge connecting the Crimean Peninsula and the Krasnodar region. They believe that this work is very important for the Russian army. Some Western media agencies commented that attacks on the Crimea Bridge were inevitable. In February, the commander of the Ukrainian Navy, Vice Admiral Alexei Nizhpapa, announced that the bridge would be demolished by 2024. Kiev has repeatedly asked Germany to provide Taurus long-range missiles, especially to attack the bridge across the Kirk Strait. German Prime Minister Olaf Scholz firmly rejected this proposal, saying that Russia could see this as Berlin's direct participation in the war. The Crimea Bridge was built between 2016 and 2018 and is the only road and rail route connecting the Crimean Peninsula to mainland Russia. However, Moscow opened a large land corridor to Crimea after Russia announced the annexation of four more regions in Ukraine in the fall of 2022. Russia said the Crimean Bridge had been repeatedly targeted by missiles and drones from the Ukrainian Navy, but most attacks were successfully prevented. In October 2022, a truck filled with explosives exploded while moving along the bridge, killing three people and causing great damage. In July last year, an unmanned suicide boat exploded under this structure, killing two people. At that time, Russian President Vladimir Putin called the attack brutal and meaningless from a military perspective. He declared the bridge was no longer used to transport ammunition. Meanwhile, spokesmen for the Ukrainian Defense Intelligence Agency and Ryusov accused Russia of using Crimea as a logistics center, making the peninsula a legitimate target for Ukraine. Russia responded to Ukraine's ultimatum, rejecting the peace conference. Russia believes that Ukraine's ultimatum cannot be considered a basis for peace negotiations. TASS News Agency quoted a statement from the Russian embassy in Bern on April 10 saying that the conference hosted by Switzerland on Ukraine, scheduled to take place in Bergenstock in June, will be useless without the participation of Russia. The Russian embassy said, the Bergenstock conference without Russia's presence would likely lead to another round of fruitless discussions and be unable to yield any concrete results. The Russian embassy stated, by organizing an event that clearly has no prospect of a real settlement of the conflict, the Swiss government once again proves that it is willing to consider only the point of view of Ukraine. The Russian diplomatic agency confirmed that Switzerland did not invite Russia to attend the conference. The Russian embassy said, our position has been clearly stated. The idea of a peace conference, which was strongly praised by the organizers, is unacceptable to us because this is just another option to promote the unworkable peace formula. This is a set of ultimatums for Russia without taking into account the national security interests of our country. The Russian embassy emphasized that ultimatums cannot be used as a basis for starting negotiations. The Russian embassy also mentioned Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's assessment of the peace conference organized by Switzerland, saying that Switzerland organized the conference with the sole goal of ensuring a sufficient number of delegates at the event and based on the peace formula ultimatum of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The Russian diplomatic agency said that this formula completely ignores well-intentioned initiatives put forward by China, South Africa, Brazil, and the Arab League.
Switzerland on April 10th confirmed that it will host a global peace summit on the Russia-Ukraine war in June at the Bergenstock Resort in Nidwalden State. Participating countries are expected to discuss Ukraine's 10-point peace formula and agree on a common document on what needs to be done to end the fighting. Kiev's peace plan calls for Russia to withdraw its troops from Ukrainian territory, as well as establish a court to prosecute top Russian officials for waging the war. Russia rejected this proposal because it was far from reality. Russia affirmed its readiness to negotiate with Kiev. However, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said in early March that Moscow would not attend the Swiss-hosted summit even if invited, arguing that it would promote the country's peace formula Mr. Zelensky. In addition, Ms. Zakharova emphasized that Switzerland, a country participating in Western sanctions against Moscow, can hardly serve as a foundation for peacekeeping efforts. Ukraine set a trap for Russian tanks and armored vehicles at Chasov your stronghold. Western experts say that Ukraine is creating a trap with Russian armored forces in Chasov Yar, a strategic area in Donbas. Eight weeks after capturing Avdiivka, Russian forces set their sights on another target to the east, the town of Chasov Yar. A large-scale battle is taking place as Russia has continuously approached this area from all directions in recent days. When Ukraine withdrew from Avdiivka, they quickly sought defense to avoid further collapse of the front line. At Chasov Yar, if Ukraine loses, they will not have many opportunities to overcome the situation when Russia from here can widen the way to advance deeper to the west. That could have catastrophic consequences, as it would provide a direct route for the Russian military to advance towards key cities, Ukrainian analysis group Frontelligence Insight explained. According to Forbes, that's why Russian advances on the eastern edge of town in recent weeks have Ukrainians and their allies so worried. So, Ukraine is creating a tank trap with Russia at a key intersection outside Chasov Yar. The trap created a bottleneck for Russian forces deploying from their forward base at Ivanivsky. That choke point is a small bridge on the T-050 for road that connects west out of Ivanivsky and through a forest into the southern districts of Chasov Yar. If Russian troops can cross the bridge, they can move through the forest toward Chasov Yar, providing Moscow with effective camouflage against Ukrainian UAVS and artillery. Therefore, Ukraine is trying to concentrate enough firepower on the bridge so that it can block Russian attacks on southern Chasov Yar before Moscow's convoy breaks into the forest. Until now, Ukraine is still gaining an advantage in controlling the situation at the bridge. On April 10th, Ukrainian forces, including anti-tank missile groups, UAVS, and artillery gunners, hit at least one Russian BMP combat vehicle while it was crossing the bridge. Frontelligence predicted that Russia would cross this bridge. The group explained earlier this week, the road connecting Chasov Yar and Bakhmut has several bridges over water canals. With the right approach and reasonable allocation of resources by Ukraine, Chasov Yar can become a great obstacle to the advance of the Russian army. However, it is not clear that the Ukrainian brigades always have all the resources they need in the context that they are running out of artillery ammunition and Russia is still increasing its bombing of Kiev positions. According to sources from the battlefield, the lack of serious firepower has made it difficult for Ukraine to stop the advance of the Russian convoy. They can expect to use UAVS to create a trap for Russian forces at the bridge to drain their opponent's military capabilities. In addition, Ukraine also tried to collapse the bridge and cut off the southern advance into Chasov Yar to prevent Russia from advancing further. However, this is a difficult task because the bridge is relatively small and built quite firmly. Earlier this month, some Ukrainian soldiers planted explosives on a remote-controlled unmanned ground vehicle to drive it to the bridge. There was a huge explosion, but the bridge did not collapse, only a hole was punctured. 